according to the gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit, who fills us with all wisdom, be with you all. And also with you. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. 
Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand before you. The church says, nay, 
rather in the midst of death we live. But to God be the glory, great things he has done. It's Trinity Sunday. Uh, you know, I thought about this. Uh, the other day I went to a bookstore, and if you all like to go to bookstores, you know, Barnes & Noble, they have this great big self-help section, if you ever go there. Uh, and in those self-help sections, I always get a kick out of it, because everything is kind of reduced to some kind of formula. You, got, you can find a book for reducing weight, or starting an exercise program, or beginning meditation, or yoga, getting your finances in order, and then of course there's the Christian self-help section. Everything you wanted to know about the Christian faith, but we're afraid to ask. How to pray, how to meditate, how to get close to God and get close to your neighbor. But you know, I was thinking about this. If you look at the word God, you pour over the Bible looking for a formula that you can use, you can find one. It's a lot more difficult. And it seems that when God put the Bible together, he hid a lot of ancient wisdom in the formulas Quite frankly, they're not very obvious. For example, there's a guy named Stephen. He was miserable, at least I'm guessing. And then he became a Christian, and then he got stoned. And much of a formula there. Uh, for that matter, how about the one about the Apostle Paul? He was a murderer before he became a Christian, but he got blinded while traveling, uh, met Jesus in a burst of light, and then spent painful, painful years uh, in prison Going from city to city in prison, routinely being beaten and bitten by snakes. Not much of a formula there either. Go to Peter. He was crucified upside down. Not much of a formula there either. And then you get to Jesus. And things really become difficult. Because apparently Jesus had not heard of this wonderful tool of acronym. All Jesus does is he's telling stories. And he's ticking everybody off. And some of the stories are outrageous. Step one, eat my flesh. Step two, drink my blood. And it ticked everybody off. And it made me realize that formulas are not what the Bible's about. I looked on my shelves, uh, all my books and the self-help books that I own, the ones you know about losing weight, uh, the ones about getting people to like you, uh, the ones about getting rich, about starting your own radio program, uh, the ones about growing hair. And I realized none of them really actually helped me very much. Frankly. i got to be honest with you. The promise is I didn't work. My life was fairly normal before I read them, meaning I had good days and I had bad days. And then my life was frankly fairly normal after reading them, meaning I still had good days and I had bad days. In other words, it made me think that life, true life, it's not a formula at all. This is Trinity Sunday, where the Universal Church pauses for one Sunday of the year and says, we worship a God, one God, who is triune, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. And in the Gospel lesson, this is what got Jesus into so much trouble, because he said before Abraham was, I am. That's Yahweh. Nobody would speak like that. And Jesus says, I do, because I am. And Jesus came along and said to the strangest things in the world. One God, three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what I've noticed in the church? It's been a pastor, 36 years. Uh, we try to come up with formulas to try to understand this most difficult teaching doctrine of the church. But it always falls short. I mean, we come up with this, you know, the idea of water being steam and ice and liquid, or the apple, you know, as a core and a seed and a peel, and all these might be helpful, but they all fall short of the wonder of who our triune God is. Because what we do know is this about our triune God. He's always relating. He's always relating. He is eternally relational. And the doctrine of the Trinity is that God is one God, eternally existent in three persons. And again, hang in here, but this is not tritheism, where you have three gods working in harmony, nor is it God taking three different forms, but these are truly three different manifestations of one God. One God and three persons who know one another and who love one another. Now, 
In the words of my favorite Christian writer, C.S. Lewis, he says this, you see, in Christianity, God is not a static thing, but a dynamic, a pulsating activity, a life, almost kind of a drama. And then Lewis says this, almost if you will not think me irreverent, a kind of dance. Interesting? Uh, you, know, you know you're glorifying something when you find it beautiful for what it is in itself. Because it's beautiful, it compels you to adore it or to have your imagination captured by it. Uh, this happened to me in college. I had to listen to classical music to get a good grade in humanities, and we had to listen to Mozart. So I listened to Mozart in college to get an A, and I wanted that good grade so I get a good job, so I get good money. And I listened to Mozart to make money. But today, I'm quite willing to spend money, quite a bit of money, just to listen to Mozart, not because it's useful to me, but because it's beautiful in itself. And when it's a person you find beautiful, what do you do? You want to serve them unconditionally. You see, when you say, I'll serve as long as I'm getting something out of it, I'll serve as long as I'm getting benefits, that's not actually serving people. It's serving yourself through them. That's not circling them or bringing around them. It's using them, getting them to orbit around you. And the cool thing about the doctrine of the triune God is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are constantly orbiting around each other. They're adoring each other, and they are serving each other. And because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are giving glorifying love to one another, God is the happiest being in the universe. Have you ever thought about that? God is happy. God is the happiest being in the universe. Now think about this for a moment. If you find someone in your life, probably your spouse, or a spouse to be Seth, if you find someone in your life that you adore, someone for whom Oh, I've got eyes only for you. And then you find out that this person feels the same way about you. What's that like? How do you remember? Oh, she, remember when we were little kids? She loves me. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me. <laughs> and all you want to do is rejoice and tell everybody in the world the person I adore adores me back. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are pouring love and joy and adoration into each other all the time, serving each other. And listen up, guys. If it's true that this world has been created by this triune God, then ultimate reality is a dance. Lewis says this. What does it matter? It matters more than anything else in the world. The whole dance or drama or pattern of this three-person life is to be played out in each one of us. Love and joy and eternal life played out in you, where you and I begin to orbit around each other, and we dance together, and we dance as a church, circling one another, loving one another, caring for one another, because that's what our triune God does for us. You ever met someone who is unbelievably self-centered? You know, don't shout out their name. <laughs> Have you ever met someone like that? I mean, they're a drag to be around. They enable gaze. They don't do anything. They're just static. They're not dynamic. A self-centered person is a person who wants everybody to orbit around them. I might help people, have friends fall in love, as long as I am the center. And they are a drag to be around. If everybody's orbiting around me, what happens? Now picture this. you got five people or ten people or maybe a hundred people. They're all on stage and every one of them wants to be the center. Everybody says, you orbit around me. You orbit around me. Nobody gets anywhere. There's no dancing. It's impossible because everyone is just saying, orbit around me. The triune God is utterly different. It's self-giving love. And this means that relationships of love is what life is all about. A confirmation kid asked me, Pastor, why in the world did God even create the world? You ever ask that question? I heard a lot. There's only one reason. Not to get joy, but to give joy. That's what God did. He's inviting us 
into the dance. See, we're made not just to believe in God or to be spiritual in some kind of way, not just to pray and get a kind of a bit of inspiration when things are tough. We are made to center everything in our life on God. To think of everything in terms of our relationship to God. To serve our God unconditionally. And that's where you and I, we find our joy. You know, uh, uh, it seems to me, the older I'm getting, uh, a lot of people don't like the idea that spirituality is relational rather than formulated. If you got a formula, you can control. Formulas offer control in God, while well, God's a person. And persons get complicated. Have you ever noticed this? People don't always do what you tell them to do. Have you ever noticed that? Try to tell your spouse what to do and see how far that goes. But formulas propose that if you do this, and this, and this, I will get this. And a lot of people treat God that way. Remember the show I Dream of Genie? Remember that? Wouldn't it be great to have a genie of your own, you know, uh, who could blank the grilled cheese sandwich out of thin air, all the while doing all the dirt, cleaning your house, and doing all the jobs you need to have done? And of course, it's very silly, but it makes me wonder if we don't wish God were a genie who could deliver a few wishes here, a few wishes there. And then it makes me wonder if what we really want from the formulas are the wishes, not the God. See, if we, if we want to control, if we want control, that's not a relationship. When I hang out or want to hang out with my best buddy, Greg, I don't stop my foot three times, turn around, say his name over and over and over like a mantra, light candles, get myself into a certain mood. You know what I do? I call him up. Because <laughs> he's my buddy. God is more than a computer or a circus monkey. Our God is love. And the Christian faith comes along and offers this relationship dynamic to all people in the world, and that you and I can enter that dance. And God offers that now, so that in this life, we're in the dance, so that when we go into eternity, it is one continued dance forever and forever and forever. The gospel of the Lord Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it is not a bunch of hoops that we need to jump through to get saved, and it's not a series of ideas that I have to agree with either. It's an invitation by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to know Him. It's about a God who loved us enough to send His Son Jesus to orbit around us, to orbit around all of us and go to a cross and to pay for all of our sins so that we can love Him now and forevermore and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not so much about having the right recipe, but about falling in love with the God who first loved you and first loved me now and forevermore, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God grant that for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ that goes beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith unto life eternal. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
Athanasian Creed. Please remember that when the word Catholic is used in the Creed, that means universal. A Roman Catholic means universal. So we'll read this responsibly, overs by overs. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. But I will not keep it whole and undefiled before God. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God in the Trinity, and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. For the Godhead of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. The glory of equal and majesty from the throne. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Creator. The Son of Creator, the Holy Spirit of Creator. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. Yet there are not three Almighty's, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And there are not three Lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord. So also by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods by the Lord. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created nor begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the, Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than the other. But all three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus of all the Trinity. It is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begun from the substance of the Father before all ages. And he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God. Perfect man, composed of the rational soul and human flesh. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by the unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. He suffered for our salvation, he ascended to hell, and was again in the third day from the dead. Ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And he is coming all people who will rise again, their bodies, and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This, this is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe in it, Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Majestic Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grant wisdom and faithfulness to your church. Guide her in the truth that the mystery of your eternal presence may be proclaimed throughout the world, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, Trying God in these days when the academic and Sunday school years may be drawing to a close, 
be with students and instructors, grant a successful conclusion to this period of learning, and may the summer break be a time of renewal and relaxation. Lord and your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, inspire nations and individuals to be better stewards of your creation, instill in us such a sense of awe at the majesty of your creation, that we are more faithful caretakers of this earth and of, and of all its resources. Lord and your mercy. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, once again we ask that peace will reign in our world and that you will bring the war in the Ukraine to an end. Lord and your mercy. Yeah. Father, strengthen and sustain those who suffer with depression or other mental illnesses. Bring healing to those who are ill and comfort to those who are grieving. Especially in our prayers, we remember May and Don and Marion, Claude and Brenda, Reggie and Chris, Mark and Ricky, Kathy and Kathy, Bruce and Ron and Elaine, Beverly and Betty. We ask that you would be with them and bless them. Also be with Angie Guthridge, who is having knee surgery. On Friday, watch over her, bless her, and those who attend to her, uh, that she would come through successfully and protect her from all harm and danger. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah, right. And Father, we remember the family. We remember Jerry and Lily Friesen upon the death of her son. Also, we remember Jean Rogers and her family upon the death of her daughter. And also, we remember the family of Shirley Wagner who passed away. Father, we thank you for these, your servants, that will now enter into their eternal rest. We thank you for the victory that they enjoy because of the life, death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Comfort the families, be with them. Remind them again of your great love and mercy and that there indeed will be a blessed reunion in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, we give you thanks and praise for Wayne Shield and for Scott and Cindy Culbert and Tom and Bernice Stelsey and for Ed and Marge Anderson and Eugene and Pat Kramer. We thank you again for these your servants. Be with them and bless them on, on their birthday and their wedding anniversary, that their love for you and their love for each other will deepen each day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now bring our offerings to the Lord. Please remember to fill out the attendance cards found in the center aisle, and then pass those to the people next to you. Thank you. 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and our creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns for all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, after supper, took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. Let's stand and sing.